Hey there, this is the key for uh, quiz 8.1 to 8.3. All right, so we have 10 multiple choice questions. So this first one is talking about the auto ionization of water, which you have some water molecules will break apart into hydronium and hydroxide. And then we have these KW values down here. And you see these are temperature dependent. Um, this corresponds to that, uh, that KW value of uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Uh, the pKW is just the negative log of that value. So that's where these numbers come from. And you can see what happens is the temperature increases, that pKW decreases. So um, what that means when the temperature goes up, if, if this value gets smaller, that means that we're getting more product on the right side because it's a negative log value. So we want to look at the choices here. So which of the following statements is true? So we have uh, A, the dissociation of water is exothermic. Well, if, if it's exothermic, that means that heat would be a product over here. And if the temperature goes up, the reaction would shift to the left. Well, based on these values, the reaction is shifting to the right, and we're getting more product. Um, so that, that's, that, that's A is false. Um, the pH of pure water is 7 at any temperature. Well, if this is, is pure water, the pH and the pOH are equal, and they add up to this pKW. So it's only 7, and you see like at uh, about 25, that's where the pKW is 14. So that's where the pH will be 7. Um, as the temperature increases, the pH of pure water increases. It looks like as the temperature increases, the, the pH will decrease. So pH and pOH will be just half of this of each of these values right here. Uh, as the temperature increases, the pH of pure water decreases. So we can see that as, as the temperature goes up, the pKW decreases. So the pH and the pOH will both decrease. So it's going to be letter D. All right, at 25 degrees, we have a solution with a pH of 8. And we want to find the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay. Well, to get hydroxide ion concentration, we need the pOH. So at, at 25, pH and pOH add up to 14. So the pOH has to be 6. So 10 to the negative 6 is what we're going to have for our OH concentration when we anti-log that. So that's going to be letter C. All right, 5 degrees Celsius, uh, we have the value of Kw, which again is temperature dependent. At, at 25, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, but this is what we have at 5. Um, the value of pKw is 14.73. So the pH and pOH would be half of this number. All right, so which of the following is correct for pure water? So at pure water, the concentration of H3O plus and OH are going to be equal. So the product of these two is equal to the Kw value right here. So then since the two are equal, um, H3O plus just by itself is going to be the square root of our Kw value. So it's got to be letter A. Okay, we have we want to figure out what mathematical expression can we use to correctly figure out pH and pOH. Alright, so we have this KOH. Alright, now first thing, this is a strong base. So the molarity of our strong base is also going to be the molarity of our hydroxide ions. So to figure out the pOH, it's just going to be the negative log of this number right here. So that eliminates uh, letter D. Um, but letter A, B, and C are still valid. All right, so then the pH is going to be 14 minus that calculation, so we can look at these values right here, and pH is going to be 14 minus, this is that pOH calculation, the correct one, so it has to be letter C. All right, which of the following statements about the pH of 0 .1, 0 0.010 molar HClO4? This is perchloric acid, this is another one of our strong acids, so that means this is our concentration of hydrogen ions, because it's a strong acid that completely breaks apart. So that means the H plus is going to be this one right here. And then the negative log of this ends up being 2.00, so it has to be letter A. All right, we have a table right here with some different concentrations of acids. We have four different acids. Um, so we know that the four acids are chlorous, hydrochloric, lactic, 
propanoic. Now the only one in here that's a strong acid is hydrochloric, and, and that's what we're trying to find right here. Which one's hydrochloric? Well, hydrochloric, since it's strong, the, the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be the same as the concentration of the acid. So the, the one that's a strong acid is going to have a pH that's the negative log of these values right here. So the only one that matches up with that is acid number 2. The negative log of 0.01 is 2. The negative log of 0.1 is 1. The negative log of 1 is 0. So this is the one that matches up. So it has to be B acid number 2. All right, the HNO2, now this is a weak acid. So we have the Ka value right here, and we want to find the pH of this. So we can do the, the calculation with the, the Ka equals x squared over the initial concentration. And when you find um, x, you're going to find the, the hydrogen ion concentration. And then we can take the negative log of that. So if I take 4 times 10 to the negative fourth and I multiply by the, the concentration which is 0 0.01 and then if I take the square root of that number that's going to give me the the H plus concentration for that weak acid um, that ends up being 0 0.0020 and then I can take the negative log of that and I end up getting uh, 2.7 so that tells me it's between 2 and 3 so again we're just using that that usual uh, expression for a weak acid equilibrium, Ka equals x squared over the original concentration. So um, once we get x, then we can figure out the pH from that. We get, we get 2.7, so it tells us B. All right, question eight, um, similar type question. So we have another weak acid, this hydrocyanic acid. We have a Ka value right here, and we want to find its pH. Well, first of all, we know it's a weak acid right here, so that's going to eliminate um, the pH is greater than 7, 7 and greater, so that eliminates A, B, and C. So it narrows it down to D and E. So just by looking at this, I mean, if I had to just guess, this gives you a range, this gives you a, a specific number, but let's figure out the actual pH. So we want to find X, so it's going to be uh, the original uh, concentration, so 0 0.01 times the Ka, and then we're going to take the square root of that, and that gives us our uh, H plus concentration, and that's going to be 2 to the negative, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 2.0 2 times 10 to the negative 6, and then we'll take the, the log of that, and we get uh, 5.70, so it's going to be in this range right here, letter D. All right, question nine, what is the H plus concentration of 0.05 molar HCN? All right, this is another uh, equation where we want to use that Ka expression. Ka equals X squared over the original concentration. Um, and we just want to solve for X. So we're going to multiply Ka, so 5 times 10 to the negative 10th. Uh, multiply that by the original concentration, 0.05. Uh, that gives me 2.5 times 10 to the negative 11th, and then I'll take the square root of that to get the H plus concentration. That ends up being uh, 5 times 10 to the negative 6th, so letter D. And the last one, number 10, now we have a weak base equilibrium, ammonium being the weak base. So we have uh, this reaction where you have an initial concentration of 0.15. Now, one thing you need to know is that um, this conjugate, this is the conjugate acid right here, this NH4 plus ammonium and uh, the hydroxide ion, the concentration of those two are going to be the same because they both have coefficients of one, all right? So we increase the concentration of the ammonia, so it gives us the ammonium concentration while well, the hydroxide has to be the same they're both in that kb equals x over the original concentration of the base these are both equal to x so we know that this is 2.3 times 10 to the negative third so that eliminates a and b so now we just have we narrowed it down to c and d and then for the ph now we could take just the, the negative log of this and get a number 
Um, but if we make this, if we increase the hydroxide, that's going to make it more basic and it's going to drive the pOH closer to zero. So it's going to be less than 2.78 because a higher hydroxide corresponds to a lower pH um, for this 0.3 molar ammonium. And if we, if we took the pH, pOH of that number, so 2.3 times 10 to the negative, negative third, if we figure out the pH, it ends up being uh, 2.64. So it shows it is less than 2.78, but letter C is the answer there. All right, and that's all for that quiz. Have a great day.